In this video we're checking out the player creator tool called Ghost Shell. As usual I need to emphasize that this is a video game and not real cybersecurity. Like I mentioned in the previous video I have set up a discord server, link is in the description. Now let's get into it. On my screen right here I'm running Ghost Shell. This is what it looks like. Before we start to review the different features in the tool we're going to take a look at how you can get it. And the way to get it at the moment is uh, from the BTC shop. So you will need to search for BTC. And at the moment it's the second link and when you search for BTC or you can click on popular websites and then it's going to be the first link. Once in here you will go into downloads. And if you don't have a BTC account already, you will need to download the BTC script called BTC and register an account and start mining the currency. And once you have that done, you will uh, need the BTC shop to download that. And I already have it, so let's start a terminal. And BTC shop, like so. And what I should say is that this is a player created tool, which means that it's only going to be available if the player continues to uh, put it up after wipes and continue to um, uh, keep it uh, working in case something changes in the game and so, so on. So if it's not, uh, if you watch this video at a future uh, point in time, um, then it's not um, guaranteed that this tool will be available. Um, but at the moment it's available in the BTC shop. Um, it's also at the moment ranked as number three. So um, it's quite the popular tool. How you will um, uh, find it is by going into the shop section. Um, inside BTC shop. And then into the tools section. And then we'll need to scroll up. And then at number 20. We have the ghost shell and as you can see it costs 60 BTC. You will need to do some mining before you have enough to buy it. And then you would just select number 20. And you will uh, agree to the price. And then it's going to ask you for the login details uh, to your BTC account. And once you have um, confirmed your purchase you will be able to run it like I have done on my server right here. So let's uh, now start to review the script itself. I must say that this is uh, one of the best uh, documentations I've seen in the tool. It's very clear how to use it. Uh, very beginner friendly, I guess. Um, so we start by running help. And in here, we can see that there are... Um, it, it, the, the tool is sectioned off into different parts. So first off you're in the main section and then it has a system section, a remote section and the other parts are pretty much just... Uh, well, uh, I, I think it will become self-explanatory when I show it. So um, this is a, a different section that we're going to go into soon. Then we have the remote one, which is when you are uh, trying to gain access to a remote computer. Then there's the local one, where you try to uh, gain access to your local computer. Then there's an R shell interface. And you can use SSH with it, you can hash uh, the hash itself as a string, or hash as a file. Then you can access, exit the tool. Let's go into the system uh, part first, so you just type system. That's going to get you into the system section. And what I'm going to do with the tool, like I did uh, with the previous one I reviewed, is we're going to complete this mission together um, to see, uh, well, to show off the tool. Uh, but uh, let's just type helping here in the system. And the uh, different features inside of system, the system section, is that you can use it to secure the PC. You can use it to gain access to Wi-Fi's. Uh, by finding Wi-Fi passwords. You can use it to uh, uh, try to be stealthy and you can also read the patch notes. So let's go back. Those are the system parts. And we type help again. And then I think we're going to go into the remote 
right away. So let's do remote. And here you're going to pick the IP that you wish to target. So we're going to use this IP right here. And then it's going to show you some information about the network as well as an NMAP scan, uh, the kernel router and who is the information. Uh, in the previous video, I compared it to um, another uh, in the previous review I did I compared that tool to a, another tool so let's do that as well see if the information is correct uh, okay that's not that doesn't look good let's do that again there we go um, one thing I would like to point out is that most uh, this formatting of the nmap is very common. Most tools use this. But one thing that is very nice here is that instead of showing the port as opened inside the router and the computer, it uh, added a, a separate column called forwarded, uh, which has um, which tells you if it's uh, a forwarded port instead of showing the port uh, in two places. That's much clearer. Um, I, I think I should also mention that this tool is very similar to Plasma. I think it's uh, inspired by Plasma and maybe even uh, based on the same source. Uh, Plasma is of course the uh, tool that I reviewed last time. Uh, it's not currently available in the game, so this is a good alternative. Uh, one thing I am noticing is that it's missing the... Uh, so, so you can first see up here, it, ha it shows the main router and uh, port 8080 and so on, just like uh, my tool does right here. But then there are two computers connected to the uh, main router and those are not visible inside of this uh, nmap scan. So uh, the only way to get into these computers is uh, via the router. Um, and I guess therefore it would be nice if you could um, see them from outside the network. Uh, but let's look at the other stuff. So we have the 15.1 uh, router and then we have the one. Well, let's see here. This one, 10, one, 10 0, 1, 1. Uh, And then you have the 24.1 and then you have the 24.4 which is of course this one which has two ports uh, that are port forwarded. So you can see here that's uh, indeed correct and very nice. Now, I would be curious how it deals with these computers. I'm guessing that we could gain access to them with this tool, but of course we don't even know that they exist, so that is a drawback, maybe something that could be improved. Uh, but I want to test it, so let's do uh, port 0, which is uh, no port at all, which is the router. And then we're just going to try the... the Okay, so it's giving us file objects, and that is not correct. You cannot access a file object on this computer right here. Um, the only uh, uh, nor is a shell correct, but in this case, at least it shows us that it's not this computer. Uh, it's not the one dot two; it's the one dot one. So. Mm. I'm guessing that these are the router as well. Let's just try the root file. That's very nice. It shows what kind of object it's found, as well as the permissions for the object. And then if it knows the lawn IP, which of course it maybe doesn't because of the limitation in the nmap. Um, th this could be the why why it's uh, doing this. I don't actually know. Let's. Um, um, I, I can confess that I don't use this tool myself so i just checked it out before this video and if i'm misrepresenting or not understanding stuff that is a very uh, plausible explanation uh, so we just got the uh, root file here you can type help and it gives us um, a host of different um, commands to play with inside of the remote section of the script 
unfortunately we can't actually see which ip which lawn ip we're connected to i think so the way we could uh, figure it out is by running sys this is a very a nice um, um, uh, tool or kill command that shows the entire file system and as you can see we are we have the kernel router here um, we also have the uh, only have the file explorer and then there is a, a htdocs website dot uh, html down here and all of these things uh, um, if you know what systems usually look like uh, it's telling us that this is in fact a router that we are connected to so when i guessed that we had the file object for the router i was correct so even though we tried to target this one it uh, gave us um, a file and shell objects in this computer uh, or router right here um, another very nice feature of this tool is that you can go back so you don't need to uh, quit the tool to restart uh, a scan. I think you just type back. Let's try it. Back. Maybe not. Maybe it's what exit. Okay, it's exit. And um, now we're back into this um, uh, section. You can even type exit again to go back into the main. But we don't want that. We want to go into this computer or network again and in here let's see here we want to change the uh, record so uh, i guess we're going to go into this computer right here and we can either target 3306 or port 80 so 3306 and we can choose if we want to inject a new password let's not Okay, very nice. Another nice part uh, that I like about this tool is that it shows the numbers in front of the uh, different memory and uh, values that it's using. And this is, if I remember correctly, something you use uh, in the local section. So I will showcase that when we get to that part. And again, you can pick whichever object you like. Um, I guess I can show that as well. So if you, you grab a computer object, for example, let me type help. And uh, you can see now we have a few more things uh, available to us. We can uh, do PS and see if there are any admins online and stuff like that. But we can also uh, do results. And this uh, enables us to change the object. So we, have, we can choose again. We don't need to rescan everything. We can now choose that we want the shell instead. And now we do have the shell, and then we just type help. Now we have even more um, commands available to us. So again, very nice that it's sectioning off the different uh, commands and when we are going to be using them, instead of showing all of it in a massive help document. Uh, so what we want to do here is probably we want to upload the tool and escalate. So we have the bounce command, we could actually, we could, we could, uh, so, so if you ls dash etc, you can see that we do not have um, read access to the password file. We, we will need some kind of local escalation here. Uh, it's also very nice that it, it shows us which uh, object we have, as well as what kind of access we have. Uh, so very uh, a lot of details that makes the tool uh, simpler to use okay so we're going to try the bounce command so we can bounce and then we want to well we could actually do sys first this uh, to see what kind of access we have on the different folders and the guest folder is usually the one you target because it uh, has all uh, um, read, write, uh, execute access 
uh, for everyone. So we're going to do bounce on the home dash guest. And it's asking us if we want to start the terminal. See what it says. I'm guessing that if I, what what happens if I type no? No. Okay, so we just stay inside the shell. And then if you wanted to start the terminal, we can use this command down here. If you wanted to do something before we are ready to get onto the system. Uh, I want to PS one more time. Okay, there's no one in here. Great. Now we do term. And now we should be able to run those shell in here. And there are also some launch arguments. You can like uh, start the in, into the section you want straight away or even into the IP you want for more efficient usage. That's also very nice. So we are going to go into local. And here we can pick which of the different libraries we want to um, use or um, try to escalate privileges with. So let's do number, let's start with the first one. Or wait, you can even pick all, but that's going to be slow because it's going to scan all of them. So let's do init. Uh, no, let's not inject any password. Okay, we can't find the meta exploit. Okay, that's strange. I thought it said that it uploaded all of it with bounds. Okay, so I guess we'll have to do that manually then. Actually, I'm not even going to do it with that. I'm going to do SCP. SCP. Dash. Blue. Dash. So slash is what it's called, I think. There we go. I think it should work now. Maybe it needs crypto as well. Let's do that. There we go. Perfect. So now we start it again. And we are going to do local. Local. And we take the init again. I must say that I'm uh, also very, uh, even though it didn't upload properly for some reason, uh, I, I, I very much like the fact that it can run without um, both the meta and the crypto. Um, many tools are just going to have a, a basic check, so you can't actually access any of the tool without those. But of course, uh, those... Um, libraries are not actually needed for a lot of the different functions so it's nice that it can run without those okay uh, no i don't want to inject anything and now we of course need to wait for the scan of the init and hopefully it will find us something that can give us access to the uh, root pass mm. We could we could take a look in here and see if it uploaded the um, meta and whatever to some other um, path. Okay, this is very nice. We have a we have both user shells. It uh, in this case it works, so it, it gives tells us what kind of uh, object it is, uh, who has access, and what lawn it's. Um, targeting so uh, we even have a root computer in here but i think we're going to be um oh well, okay let's let's pick that one let's pick the root computer mm. so let's see here is there anything else interesting in here not really 
let's be in here first okay we actually got a root shell with this one that's interesting might be because there is a user online here now since we are in here I am afraid that we changed the root password as well. Um, okay, so let's see here. If we just go into cat, etc password, and then we grab the root password, and we use the thought we had access to the hash in here let's try it hash i don't remember what it was was it l or can't see that uh probably a okay so we can access it um even though you can't see it in here that's nice and Let's just wait for that, and while we do, let's see if we can figure out where the meta was uploaded to, if, if it actually was. Because it looked like it uploaded three things, so... It is up... Oh yeah, I, I put it in there, yeah, that's, that's, that's right. No, it seems to be missing from the system, so we have the uh, password here. And what you could do now, I guess, is I actually don't know. Uh, this is another point that I want to give this tool, and that is that even though we did a local uh, escalation here, it's still... Um, Oh yeah, we have the root uh, password up here already. Um, it still uh, ga uh, put us into this um, manager instead of just uh, giving us a root password and being done with it. So we can actually browse the system from inside the tool, just like we did uh, with the remote tool or remote section of the tool. That's, that's also very nice. I think we will be Exiting the tool now then, and then using sudo. And error. And now that we have root access, we can go... Uh, yeah. Let's, let's uh, see if we can just complete the mission real quick. So... We're running program and then we are going to look for the person of interest. There we go. And then we are going to add a new one, new entry, and it's going to be this and then it's going to be in the year 1996 and i think you just click save yep and now that's added so that's uh, the mission completed and then before we um, answer the email we are going to see if this tool can erase some of our traces so what we want to do is i think we want to uh, let's let's first start it so it's in the guest folder we need to go into there and then once in here we will be seeing if we can i think it's in system See what happens here help and then we're going to try this one and see what it does okay so it's only uh, messing with logs 
so we probably need to remove the tool manually from the server. So we go back and I guess what you would have to do then is remote maybe. I mean, you of course don't need to do this uh, from inside the tool. You could uh, just exit the tool and do it with the normal commands on the server, but just to oh wait, that's bad. That's bad. Exit. Um, it's interesting to see if this tool is able to do it. Maybe we only had uh, a computer up access, for example. I think we uh, we are going to be able to use the delete command or something like that. So. Local, oops, local, and then we did find something good in the init, so let's do that one again. And another thing I want to test is if it's able to find the missing computers in the nmap scan if we were to scan from inside the network itself. I think we're gonna do that after. Maybe we should probably do that before actually. Mm. Fine. Let's restart the tool. And we can try the launch arguments. So it's gonna be remote. And then the IP. Oh yeah, we need to... Type the path first. Very nice. So it, it's able to uh, go straight into the uh, section we wanted and even uh, end map the correct uh, IP. Uh, but sadly, it is still not able to see inside the network, so um, you would need another tool if you wanted to uh, scan um, or uh, if you wanted to be able to see deeper inside the network, even on the main router actually, which is uh, something many tools actually can do. Okay, um, now we do the part that I was intended to do okay let's see here so we go into the local and in it and once again we scan this library um what i think about the tool is that it's very well documented the feature that it does have it, it or pretty much all the features that are included in the tool uh, are done very well it's missing some stuff uh, but of course what tool isn't um so for what for what it is and for what it's worth i think it's a great tool um let's let's do this now so i want to try it with the root computer object and then we just do this and then we are going to see if we can remove the these files let's do i think it's delete or something right yeah delete and then file path so delete delete okay Uh, let's just try another thing as well. So ls home guest. Okay, so that doesn't give us a path. So it's actually better to use sys uh, for this. Where is it? Here it is. We do the crypto. And then, if you were to do this, I'm fairly sure that we are leaving a bunch of logs in the log file now, so... 
probably gonna have to remove those. And now all of the tools are removed from the system. And then I guess we're just gonna go back and into the log viewer. Oh wow, okay. So we have Shell obtained on port zero. I guess that's the local escalation. Connection routed. There's no connection established. Oh well. Now that's clear, and then we just exit. And then we will reply with done. And the customer satisfied the job. So as you can see, a great tool and it had no problem completing a simple uh, police record uh, mission. Um, I think we will leave the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you can like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.